friends, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reading some more from the Instagram page Dark Theme Reddit. You might remember I did a video a few weeks ago now, probably, about the strangest things that had happened to people. This one is What's the most paranormal thing that's happened to you? So it's probably going to be similar to the other one, but hopefully a little more paranormal ghost stories and things like that. And I am recording this during the day, trying something different, because it's just a rainy day today, and I was kind of slack this week, I didn't do any filming, so I don't have anything else to do today. So there might be some bird sounds. I know not everyone likes that, but if you do, hopefully it's, you find it relaxing. Let's get started. So first I'll read through the comments that were selected by the Instagram page. There's usually like five or six of the best ones, but then people will leave their own comments on the post about their own experiences. So the first one they have says, just a short one here, when I was in a forest alone, then I heard someone calling my name out of nowhere, and no one's there aside from me. I heard it like the voice of my cousin, then I immediately ran out of the forest. Next one says, We have a clock that tells the time. That tells the time. It's a little pyramid from the 80s or the 90s. You touch the tip, it beeps and speaks the current time. Horribly. You can hardly understand it. But it does that. It was my dad's. My dad died. So often when I think of him, it just goes off randomly. It's probably just crappy senses from being so old, but I swear it always seems to strike right when he comes to mind. It never happens on its own when he isn't. This next one's a good one, if it's true. A building I used to work in was haunted. Lots of weird stuff. Shadows, noises, motion-sensitive things that would go off when no one was around. Things falling off shelves for no reason. All the usual. The ladies' room in the basement would regularly have noises coming from it that sounded like several girls whispering and giggling. If you stood outside the door, you would feel like you could almost make out what they were saying, but couldn't quite understand it. The noise would stop if you went into the bathroom, and wouldn't happen again until another night. There was also a creepy, emaciated old man that would stand behind my car, blocking me from backing up. He was only visible in the rearview mirror. If I turned around to look at him, he wouldn't be there. It didn't matter where in the lot I parked, he would still show up. It got so bad I stopped looking in my mirror before backing up. But the worst one was a night that a co-worker and I were the last two to leave and were locking up. I went to leave a note on the receptionist's desk for her for the morning, and while I was writing it, I noticed on her phone system screen, it showed a phone in the basement call center was just picked up. It then dialed another extension in the call center, and that extension started blinking, showing it was ringing. The second extension was then picked up. At that point I wondered if someone was still in the call center, so I used the call monitor to listen in on the call. What we heard was a weird raspy noise that sounded like a mix of heavy breathing and a really slow burp. It went on for several seconds then stopped. Then the phone system showed one extension hung up and then the other. I hung up the receptionist's phone, and my co-worker and I decided whatever the hell was downstairs was welcome to play with the phones all it wanted, because there was no way we were going down there to investigate. We locked up and left. I did not look in my mirror before backing out of my parking spot. The 
sounds creepy. Hearing the breathing sounds on the phone. Next one says, driving through a reservation late at night, saw what looked like someone riding on horseback along the side of the road, which is not uncommon, but in full ceremonial tribal dress. They briefly went out of sight as they crested a hill, and then when I crested, they were gone. I asked some of the folks I worked with on the reservation about it, asking whether there was a powwow or something similar happening there wasn't. But they did say that road used to be a horse path used by hunters and warriors before colonization. Probably just a dude on a horse and my brain misinterpreted what I was seeing but who knows. Definitely made the hair on the back of my neck stand up though. I'm a huge skeptic so this is the only case where I've ever seen or heard something that couldn't be easily explained. So those are the ones that were picked by the Instagram page. Now I'm going to read the comments other people have left about their experiences. My parents went on a road trip for one of their anniversaries. I can't remember all the stops they made, but I know they did drive from Vegas to somewhere in Arizona. They drove pretty late into the night and stopped at one of the last motels before a hundred or so miles of just desert. My mum said the people at the front desk were so nice and polite, and their room was clean, but it was just creepy. She said she had a dream about the front of the motel and the four-way stop. On the side of the road she described a beautiful Native American young woman in a dress, when all of a sudden the woman snapped her head back and looked straight at my mom, which made her wake up. Then for the rest of the night she kept dreaming that she would turn over in bed and see my dad right next to her on his side, staring at her, but his face was distorted. She said she kept having that distorted face dream the rest of the night. One of the last times she woke up for real, my dad was awake and told him the dreams she was having. He said he had the exact same dream where he would turn over to my mum looking at him in bed and her face was distorted. They left the hotel as soon as the sun started rising. And it's pretty weird. Not mine, but my mum's. This was August 1997, so I was five years old, sleeping in my bed with the television showing the static, white noise. My mum comes in to tuck me in and just when she was about to turn off my TV, she sees a face in the screen, not just anyone's, Princess Diana. She saw Diana screaming in a car and found out later that she was killed in a wreck. That still gives me goosebumps. I was sleeping on the floor of my in-law's living room many years ago and in the middle of the night I felt like someone was sitting on my chest. I couldn't breathe and I freaked out. It reminds me of the experience that I had that I shared in the last video. They kind of call it sleep paralysis, but it always seems to have this paranormal vibe to it. Years ago when I was still living at home, I heard rapid, soft knocking coming from my closet door. It lasted for what seemed like almost 10 minutes. I was wide awake and trying to wrap my brain around it when it stopped. Another time my boyfriend was staying over in that same house when he got up in the middle of the night to get some water. He came to my bed to wake me up, asking if I was just in the kitchen. Obviously I had been asleep. He went a little quiet and told me that he clearly heard a female laugh while he was up weird stuff. There's a castle in Trim, Ireland, where I saw my friend see a ghost. I didn't see it, but I witnessed my friend have basically a little mini mental breakdown while we were on tour of the castle, and I thought he was overheating and just needed time to himself outside. 
but when we reunited with him he told us he'd seen a nun walking around with our tour group and then watched her walk through the castle wall. That was a half hour before the guide mentioned the ghosts that are often seen around, one being a nun. In 2015, I worked for a prestigious law firm in DC. Random Friday night and the Obergefell decision comes out. That night they lit up the White House in rainbows and I wanted to get a few pictures. My firm has the best views, so I decide to go up to the 12th floor and snap some pics. I swipe my card and by the time I'm up I realize no one else is there. It's maybe 9 or 9.30 p.m. I'd never been there while the entire firm was out. All the lights were out, but I was determined to get my pics and leave, so I kind of quickly book it to the conference room. But I'm losing confidence, so I put my headphones in and play music and then take my pics. As I'm leaving, I swear I hear music other than my headphones, so I mute it and hear classical music playing somewhere. I open the conference room doors and the music just stops. I decide to take a different loop than the way that I'd come up. And as I pass the kitchen, it lights up as if someone walked in and turned on the lights. The way I ran to the elevator bay and slammed those buttons, oh my god. Waiting the 15 seconds for the elevator to come made me want to die. Someone says, I drove through 95 in Miami and encountered no traffic jams. Truly life-changing experience. Two super loud knocks on my bedroom door one night. I live alone. I collect music boxes. I have them all displayed in a big cabinet. Shortly after the death of my auntie, I was having a really bad day. Work sucked. A tire blew on my car, and I was missing her terribly. I came home, sat on the couch, and just started crying. Suddenly, every single music box started playing at once. Startled me to death. They all played for a moment, then stopped. It really made me feel better. Like maybe auntie was telling me everything was going to be okay. It had never happened before, but has happened a few times since when I'm feeling really down. Oh, there's this video of a night guard at a school where he's recording an empty classroom and you could hear some sort of class lesson going on. It's in Spanish, but not sure which country. Someone says you can tell some are totally fake. Okay, guys, it is night time now. I had to wait a few hours for the birds to stop. They got a little bit crazy. And then the rain was really coming down as well, so we'll continue on now. Someone says, in the first story, that was a skinwalker. Don't ever follow the voice. Run. This person says, I've had doors slam shut, strange smells, voices, and oh yeah, I've had a picture frame fly across the room from a table at hip height. To hit the wall right by my head across the room. After my mum died, me and my fiancé lived in the house she died in. Hell, we lived in the room she died in. So much happened in that time. I would occasionally come in to find him very spooked. He'd often ask me if I was walking around the house in the night and thought I was home when I was still at work. I'd love to hear what he really saw, but it seems a touchy subject for him. When I was a kid, my best friend and I were riding our bikes on the sidewalk, and out of nowhere I heard my name in a high-pitched voice. I told my friend and we stopped. Seconds later, a car crashed like five meters in front of us, and we heard a crow screaming three times. I still think about this sometimes because if we didn't stop, the car would have hit us. Years ago, our phone rang in the middle of the night. 
The caller ID said name of the assisted living facility my granddad lived in. I answered and my sister said granddad just died. I asked her if she had stayed with him and she said no, I'm at home. When I hung up, the caller ID now had her number, but I know what I saw and it was granddad saying goodbye. I saw a ghost down a disused coal mine once. It's a former mine turned museum and they take people down into the mine to explain how coal mining changed over time. I was one of the adults on the school trip that was in charge of watching a small group of five to six year olds. Anyway, I was at the back of the whole larger group on the trip with about four or five kids all trying to hold my hands at once. At one point in the mine tour, they have everyone turn off their headlamps at the same time so you can see how dark it would be if your light ever went out while working there because they ran on a battery. Just before everyone turned off their headlamps, I thought another ex-miner tour guide came up behind me. I saw him out of the corner of my eye. He had a helmet with a light, he was wearing overalls. He had a sleeveless shirt on underneath and he looked streaked with coal dust. He looked at me, gave me a wry grin when I turned my head a bit to look at him. My brain caught up and I didn't know why he'd be dressed like that. And when I turned to look at him again, he wasn't there, just gone. I got goosebumps and tried very hard not to freak out because of the kids. Telling myself over and over that ghosts aren't real, but even if they were, he clearly meant no harm. Later, out of earshot of the kids, I asked the tour guide taking us around if people ever see ghosts down there. He said I thought you'd seen something back there. He asked me what it had looked like and I told him. He said they don't show themselves to everyone. Lucky me. I used to work at a hospital, and the hospital took over an old senior living home. Of course that building has stories, but I was a skeptic. But the more I worked in the building, the more odd things I noticed and experienced. My co-worker saw an old lady in a rocking chair when she cleaned a room upstairs, and it was the same room I felt watched in. Then I took a night shift and was on one side of a long hallway about to head downstairs when I noticed the motion sensor light on the other side turn on and then the next one and then the next one and then the next one closer and closer to me at the pace of someone walking slowly up the hallway I've never in my life had my heart drop to my stomach so fast and I flew down the stairs the billing department upstairs had sage and a water bottle and they spritzed it all day A couple of years ago I lived alone in a house that was built in the 1940s. I had a few experiences while living there, but the most prominent one was in the middle of the night, a few days after I had just moved in. It was after midnight and I was asleep in the master bedroom. My dog slept out in the living room. I woke up to a very loud noise of several boxes falling down the stairs. The stairs led into the storage basement. But I heard every thud as the boxes hit every step and bounced off the walls as they fell. It was so loud it woke up the dog too and he let out a bark. I knew I hadn't left any moving boxes next to the stairs and I knew the cellar door was closed. So I stayed in my bed completely frozen and listened for the dog to go inspect the area. The next morning I checked the entire house, including the cellar and nothing was out of place or had fallen over. I did find out a few weeks later that my landlord's mother passed away in the living room. I was living at my grandparents' Prohibition era house. They had a bathroom under the stairs. I was taking a shower one day when the door started to shake violently, as if someone was trying to get in. I thought my brother was playing a prank. He said he hadn't. I had him grab the door from the outside and start shaking it, and it didn't budge very much. From the inside of the bathroom, I took the door and started to shake it, and it reacted the same as how it was being shaken earlier. 
I concluded that something had been in the bathroom with me trying to get out rather than something trying to get in. There was always weird stuff going on with that house, especially the bathroom. Someone said, the call centre guy's description of the whispers, if you stood outside the door you would feel like you could almost make out what they were saying but couldn't quite understand it, and they would stop if you went in the bathroom, is so visceral because if you've experienced something like this then you know it's so accurate. And someone responded to that, so true. When I was 11, one night I heard multiple voices all whispering loudly outside my bedroom door. I froze and ran downstairs to my parents. We had an extension on the back of the house that they were in very, very far from my room, so it definitely wasn't them or the TV. But that experience of the loud whispering but not knowing what they were saying will stay with me forever. Another person said, this happened to me in my childhood house all the time. I would hear what sounded like a party, laughter and talking, and it sounded like it was coming from the hallway, but it would stop the second I opened my bedroom door. I didn't recognize the voices, didn't have company, couldn't tell what anyone was saying. One time I swore when I opened the door I could very clearly hear bare feet on the tile running away down the hall. And another person also says, I used to hear shit like this in the house I grew up in. So that's what made me start sleeping with a box fan on so I wouldn't hear it. 25 years later and now I can't sleep without a fan. In April 2023, I was in the Hot Wheels section of my local Walmart with a friend. As I'm looking, a 65-ish man with a tweed cap, an olive sweater, and a leather jacket walks by and engages in conversation with me. He tells me about a Hot Wheels convention that had high-quality cars in for dirt cheap. He asked if this aisle had any Mini Coopers. I told him that I hadn't found one, but I'd let him know if I did. Not three seconds after he rounded the corner, I found one. I yelled after him and got no response. I went around the corner, didn't see him. Walked down the other aisles, asking people if they'd seen him. No one had. My friend had tried the other direction with similar results. By now, I was sufficiently weirded out. I went to customer service and asked them to look at the cameras to see if he was in the store. Stunningly, the camera for where we had been, had been out while we were there. I still had the mini, so you better believe I bought it. When I got home, I looked up the convention he mentioned. It had not been held since 1997, when the building that hosted it burned down, killing two people. I couldn't find out if the guy was one of them, but I still have the mini in the box, and I keep it in my car at all times, because if I see him again, I will not pass up my chance to give it to him. I went to DC when I was 11, so about 10 years ago, and we stayed in what was essentially an Airbnb apartment. It wasn't a hotel. Our key was in a mailbox that we were given the code to. One night I was up watching TV on the sofa bed while my brother slept next to me and my parents were in the bedroom. I felt someone walk behind me and reach to scratch my head, and I leaned into it. I thought it was one of my parents getting up for a glass of water in the kitchen. When I turned around, no one was there. It couldn't have been my brother, turned completely away from me. I got up and shot to my parents' room where both were still sound asleep. I was terrified for the rest of the trip. Not very paranormal, but I work in a nursing home and often when a resident has passed away the elevators act funny. They stop on a floor and nobody is standing there to get in. We now say, well do come in Mr or Mrs, saying the name of the person who just died. And then someone responded to that saying, I am or was a nurse and in my grad year worked medical ward 
where we quite often had patients pass. I was on night shift and we had a long-term patient that, to be honest, no one ever wanted to look after because he was constantly on his buzzer for things like fluffing his pillow. Our buzzer system was electronic and we wore pages to alert us when a patient called or our shift partner's patient. So this night shift, my shift buddy and I had to go into this patient to give him his routine morphine. As we were checking his wristband, he died. We both stood there confirming he had passed, when both our pages went off with a call coming from him. We were both there, and there was no way that buzzer was pressed by someone alive. I always thought it was his sense of humour, and showing that he knew how all the staff felt about his buzzer use. And then another person said, in the hours before my nan died, the door to her hospital room kept opening on its own. It was a modern building, so no drafts, etc. I've always thought it was my granddad coming to get her. I worked the closing shift at a haunted school during the summer B and A program. Doors sometimes knocked back. The toilets would flush when you'd walk by the bathroom doors, and sometimes you'd hear footsteps. I also lived in a haunted house at the same time, so you get used to that fight or flight feeling after a while. When my first was born, I splurged and got a cordless video monitor. At the time, these were a new thing. I felt so fancy, lol. Even when I didn't really need it, I always had it with me. It was just really cool to have a handheld live feed and be able to see him sleeping in colour and listen in. The only downside is it would randomly make a sudden loud static sound very quickly, then back to normal. If the sound was turned off, sometimes the sound bar would turn red, which means it was picking up loud noises, which meant baby crying but he was on screen, completely asleep. When I turned the sound up, there was no noise. I never thought anything of it, and figured it was just glitching. One afternoon, my husband and I were in the kitchen talking, and I had the monitor sitting on the island. It made the loud static noise, Then a few minutes later I heard what sounded like soft laughing. We're still blown away with this new technology. So when I picked it up, we both leaned in to see our son. He was smiling as someone was patting his belly. Just the arm was in view. We were both smiling and doing the oars until it dawned on my husband and he yelled, who the F is that? Then it clicked. I can't explain the fear that took over my body. Only the three of us were there. He ran into the bedroom and I grabbed my phone to call 911. He comes out white as a ghost and says there's no one in here. My son was still smiling, everything was normal. I scooped him up and we stayed up all night talking about what happened. I have no explanation. If it were just me I could explain it away, but it was a shared experience. I once went on holiday with a friend. I used to wake up in the night feeling like someone was sitting on the end of the bed. I was too scared to ever actually look, and I didn't say anything to my friend, thinking she wouldn't believe me anyway. A few nights after, she told me she woke up and saw someone sitting on my bed. Someone responded, no. Someone says, it's crazy what the human mind can trick someone into believing. Ghosts aren't real, and I challenge anyone who believes in them to provide proof of their existence. And someone responded, Not sure this is the proof you're after, but I think it's interesting. Stephen Hawking said the more he studied multidimensional theories, such as brain world theory, the more he believed the laws of physics supported something we might interpret as ghosts or the afterlife. Someone responded to them saying, good point, I don't necessarily believe in ghosts, 
but humans from all religions and cultures have said for thousands of years, I saw or detected something that was unusual, and I think dismissing these observations out of hand isn't logical. Someone said, even if they're not, the stories are fun and people like them. Let people have the fun, you know? People that believe in ghosts are going to anyway, and people that don't already don't. I suppose that's true. I've gone through phases in my life where I thought they absolutely couldn't exist, because I thought logically that's not possible. But the more I sort of learn, and or not necessarily learn, but just read or listen to people talk about things, the more I realize so much is possible. So now I'm back believing that they could exist. What they are, I don't know, but it just seems so many people have had experiences that it seems more crazy to think that all of these people are just misinterpreting it. There's still a lot more if you guys want our link this in the description so you can check it out if you really want to. Otherwise I'm going to end the video there and thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time.